Disclaimer, Moza has sent me all of this gear to review, however that is not going to change my opinion or my overall outlook on this whole review. Thank you. Look at them. So cool and clean. Drapes in matte black paint, bristling with carbon fiber accents. Subtle, black, brushed, direct drive wheels. This is what you expect when you're buying a direct drive wheel. The sleek coolness and subtlety. So you would expect when a new sim racing company comes along, they would follow the tradition. However, when it comes to this new company, nobody told them that. And it does seem that with this welcome breath of fresh air, the rule book has been torn up. This company is running with the mentality of go big or go home. And when I say going big, they've literally started at the deep end with this. It's called Moser, and this particular model that you are looking at right now is the R16, the latest offering to the direct drive market. And it's not just the new base that they are offering. Moser has came out right away with an entire ecosystem, consisting of their direct drive bases, their own steering wheel, their very own pedal set, and even their own dashboard. And that just sounds crazy. Now, if you came to me about a week ago and said to me that a brand new company is coming out, starting out big, going all out with a direct drive wheel, all the high-end stuff, and it would be bright orange, I'd have laughed at you. There's no way that anyone would do that. What kind of company would come along with no previous sim racing experience and go straight into the direct drive market? Well, um, this one. What we have here is a 16 Newton meter monster, and that's just the start. None of that sensible brushed aluminium nonsense. Let's give everyone something that's bright orange and has got enough power to pull your thumbs out. I mean, I'm running this at about half power, and it still feels very, very strong. But what I find absolutely crazy is that this is a brand new company and this is the weakest option that they have. They also offer something else called the R21 direct drive wheel. And you've guessed it, it has a peak output of 21 newton meters of torque. It, it's completely mad. We're not gonna bother starting off small. We're going straight for the big boys. I like that approach, I like that a lot. So it most definitely is a direct drive base. And that's a problem. Because who is going to say no? I don't want a Fanatec or a SimuCube or a Bodnar or an OSW or a Thrustmaster or a SimMagic. I would rather spend my money on something totally unproven, preferably by a company I've never heard of. I mean, why would you do that? Once more, because of the high-end nature of this product, it's put itself in a rather difficult situation. Because it's the high end of the market, and because it is a direct drive wheel, it's got a big problem before it's even gotten started. This R16 that I have here is just a smidgen over 750 pounds. Now you may ask yourself, why is that an issue? It's priced just like every other direct drive wheel. But here's the problem. Because within doing that, it's put itself in the firing line of one of the biggest names in the business. Business. For a bit more money, you can buy yourself a Fanatec DD1. With a DD1, you get four extra Newton meters of torque and access to a ginormous ecosystem. But that is to be expected from a company that has been in the business for years. Yes, the Moser is cheaper, but £750 or $1,000 is still a lot of money. So this is where I come in. Is this brand new DD wheel from a company that's brand new to the market worth your time and money? And my short answer is... Hell yeah. So for that amount of money, it's got to feel pretty special. Obviously, since it's slightly cheaper than the Fanatec DD1, you would obviously expect it to just not be as well refined. Well... No. This wheelbase has got to be one of the most surprising hidden gems I've ever came across. This wheelbase is one of the smoothest pieces of equipment I have ever felt. Once you've got your settings right, and it may take a little bit of time getting them right, 
but once you do, this is as smooth as butter. Now, I've had the privilege of being able to test this for a couple of days now, and also doing my own research on it, seeing what other people think of it. Right now, I'm using this wheel in a set of Corsa, and my good friend Will over at Boosted Media says that the force feedback, while it was in his pre-production stage, was terrible, frankly. But since I've got my hands on a customer model, which will be the model that you can buy, whatever problems they've had before, they've fixed them. It's fabulous. But I've also went and tested it with other games, including the Sato Corsa Competizione, Race Room, and even Automobilista 2. And I should mention that I don't get along with Automobilista 2, or its fans for that matter. I don't like the way the game drives, but with this DD base, nah. It's a very different story now. The consistency between game titles is phenomenal. In some areas, yes, it could use a bit of improvement. In some cases, there is a slight numbness in some titles, like the F1 games. Moza are taking their entry into the market very, very seriously. Whatever improvements that need making, you bet your bottom dollar they're going to improve it. When I was watching one of Boosted Media's videos on his review, he mentioned something with the steering wheel where one of the flappy paddles had this weird design to it which could possibly break easily. And since he's mentioned that, it's fixed. If there's something that people are going to have a problem with, Moza are going to listen. And that shows you that they're not wanting to be little players in this. They want to do it right. So to give you a quick rundown, the Moza R16 that I have here is smoother than the Fanatec that I use every day. And that is extremely impressive. Moza at this point in time are going through some teething issues, which are pretty much guaranteed to get ironed out in the near future. But what makes this so incredible and clever is that this is Moza's first ever attempt at making a direct drive wheel or a sim racing base at all. And the fact that they've been able to make a product this good this early on is remarkable. It's not something that can be ignored. Obviously, there are some improvements that do need to be made here and there. The blue light, for instance, on the front of the base, that's there to tell you that the base is switched on. But depending on where you're sitting, that little bright light is always on and is shining directly into your eyes. That, I feel, needs to change. And change it will. Because after mentioning this little criticism to Moza, in the next software update, they are going to be adding the option to turn this off. So already, there is one improvement improvement that they are striving to achieve. Another thing that I don't particularly like is the mounting options. On the bottom of the base, there are four screw holes that fit in a square layout, and that's fine. But if the mounting plate doesn't have that, then you have to make a separate purchase for a separate bracket that Moza do provide. This is something that I feel like should be included as part of the package. And while we're on the mounting side, the screws are very small and not very long. Because this is direct drive, you need to have something that's sturdy to hold this thing and chances are it'll be made out of metal. The screws that were provided were not long enough to go all the way through the thick metal, so I had to improvise and find some of my own, which is fine, but not fine if you don't have them. And while we're on the subject of things that could do with some improvement, the software. Now, at this point in time, the Moza Pithouse software that you need in order to run this wheel is constantly being developed and improved. But at this point in time, the software does need improving. Sometimes when I'm downshifting quickly, it'll miss a gear. And the software itself, at least on my system, it does eat up quite a large amount of my CPU. So often when I'm driving in a Sato Corsa, I'll get the 99% CPU usage. However, all of these little things are merely teething issues. Stuff that can be easily fixed. Right now, the feeling through the wheel is fantastic. However, it's only gonna get better. Obviously, in order to feel the force feedback, you're going to need a steering wheel. The RS racing wheel is as good as you can get for a first attempt. There is not much that needs improving with this steering wheel, but again, there are small teething issues. All the buttons and switches are all neatly laid out, they're all very easy to reach, and that's fine. But they've all been prematurely labelled. Like there's a button down here that's labelled camera. I don't want to use that as my camera button. I want to use it for something else. That's like having a house being built for you and then the builders deciding for you 
that the kitchen is going to be upstairs in the master bedroom. I don't want it upstairs in the master bedroom. I want the kitchen where the kitchen is supposed to be. Now I know it's a very small nitpicky thing and it isn't really a problem and it doesn't detract from the whole wheel experience whatsoever. Since Moza is listening and they are taking every bit of criticism seriously and that is a good thing, then what I think they should have done is with the wheel, get rid of all of the labels that have been pre-positioned for you and then have them as a sticker set. So then you can decide what button goes where. Because no doubt in the future I'm going to be changing these switches around to, to be more comfortable for me. But someone is going to have a go of this rig that isn't me and they're going to look at the switches and think, hmm, I'll press that because that does that and then find out it sets off a bomb somewhere. But that is my only criticism about this wheel. Everything else they've done with this wheel is great. The wheel also, as standard, comes with two clutch paddles and that is fantastic. Except for the fact that the software doesn't cater for dual clutching, which they really do need to get a move on and, and get that sorted. But they are most likely going to be adding that very soon, so stay tuned for that. But the fact that the steering wheel also comes with these two dual paddles is really good because if you're disabled and you don't have the ability to use your legs, then you can use them for throttle and brake. So it is good that Moza are thinking about the people who aren't able to race traditionally. Now, the main question that most of you will have on your mind is, what is this wheel like to use? Is this worth my £380? This wheel is so comfortable to use. The way they've shaped the little hand grooves that go right where my fingers are, it feels like I've grown the wheel instead of me holding on to a wheel. It feels perfectly natural and the force feedback translates extremely well. Now this isn't the only steering wheel you can get. You can get a D-shaped steering wheel if you're more focused on doing the GT kind of stuff. And you can also have it in Alcantara. But if you ask me, go for the leather one. But if you want that just little bit extra bit of authenticity when you're racing for a bit more immersion, then by all means, go for the Alcantara ones. Because there's literally no difference, it's just the texture. I absolutely love this rev count display. It's so vibrant and colourful. And it is really bright. But the thing that I really like most about it is, is that it doesn't follow the traditional dot system where one dot, two dot, three dot, to build up your revs, it's basically one bar and it is very fluid. I absolutely love that. The only thing that eeks me about this little system is that in order to have that displaying the revs that are in the game, you have to have the Moza Pit Stop app open. And as I mentioned earlier, that's a bit of a power hungry beast. So overall, I absolutely love this steering wheel. It is such a pleasure to drive. It's comfortable, it's exceptionally well made. What I particularly like, the button presses, they're not like a click, it's an actual spring loaded button. It feels really nice to use. What I particularly love as well is the little um, multi-position switches like the brake balance and the traction control. These, I have to say, the way these are shaped are much better than the ones that Fanatec offer. The Fanatec ones are this like really weird triangular shape, especially on the, uh, the Formula V2. Don't get me wrong, they're comfortable to use, but these are even more comfortable. They're perfect, absolutely perfect. And I haven't even touched on my absolute favourite thing about the steering wheel. The one thing that I've never seen before that this wheel does is... A horn! The wheel, when it comes to the button box, also has this really nice carbon fibre look finish with some nice yellow highlights. Because black and yellow, they really go well together and it actually looks fantastic. What's also great is the quick release. It's very simple and it's very small and you don't have to faff around with anything like that. You just put it on, like so. And that's the wheel on. I'd like to bring up something else about Moza that I forgot to mention earlier, is that while Moza are brand new to sim racing, they are not a brand new company, so to say. Before they got into the whole sim racing thing, their main business and product was camera gear and camera gimbals. To demonstrate what these are, Moza has very kindly sent me over a camera gimbal, their Moza Aircross 2. And I have to say, it is very nice. It's a massive step up from the camera gimbal that I currently have. So there's a little bit of history about the company. Let's get back on track. I genuinely thought when I received this that this was just going to be some cheap plastic nonsense that I'll be dealt with within a couple of hours. I wouldn't be impressed and then I would have sent it back on its way. The more I drive this wheel, 
the more I realise that that is just simply not the case. It is very clear to me, after using this base for a couple of days now, that Moza are simply not here to mess around and just get a cheap buck out of you. They want to make the best that they can. And I should point out that I own a Fanatec DD1, and when the Fanatec Direct Drive Wheels came out, they were not great. Their software was not up to scratch, and a lot of people did get a bit of a turn off from them. And they are the leading company in the industry for a reason. They kept at it and kept making it better and better. With this DD wheel though and their software, while the software isn't perfect yet, this is absolutely mind-blowing for a first attempt. Mind-blowing. And I should remind you that this direct drive base is smoother than the Fanatec that I own. And it pains me to say that. And if this is just their first attempt, I can't wait to see what the future holds for them. If Moza stick at it, develop the software even further, I reckon within two, maybe three years, they're gonna be nearer the top of the table. So, in conclusion, can I recommend the new Moza gear? Now, I can already hear you saying, Corey, you haven't reviewed everything. You haven't done the dashboard, and you haven't reviewed the pedals at all. Now, there is a very good reason for that. One, the pedals I don't have just yet, but do not worry, they are sending those to me, so you bet we are going to review them when they get here. And two, I don't want this review to be two hours long. So right now, we're just going to review what we have access to. But don't worry, the pedals are coming and we are going to review those. Now, I can already guess what you're probably thinking because, you, as you know, I'm affiliated with Fanatec, so you're probably expecting me to say, well, this company and development is not quite there yet. It still needs a little bit of time before we actually consider it. So you should probably buy the Fanatec with my affiliate link down below. No. Because from what I've seen from this company, the development stage is going so rapidly and so brilliantly, and where they've actually managed to get themselves right now, I am not willing to fob this company off because I've got ties with another. We're cutting that out completely. If you are in the market for a new direct drive base or wheel, then I have to say, you should 100% consider getting a Moser. The motor inside it is the smoothest motor I've ever felt, and I know I keep going on about it again and again and again, but these guys are in the early stages of development with their DD wheel and technology, and they have already achieved so much so early on. And if this is what they've got so early on, what are they going to achieve in the next two or three years? I'm predicting in the not too distant future, Moser are going to be nearer the top of the game. Do you remember when I said something about the little labels here that I don't particularly like? Well, I mentioned that to him, and they came back to me and basically said, we're changing that. We are going to be shipping out sticker sets with the wheel, so you guys can customize it. Not to mention they've got some great stuff planned for the future. Uh, in the very near future, they're going to be releasing a new wheel. I can't really tell you much more than that, but if you want to see that, stay tuned, and you bet your bottom dollar we're going to be reviewing that. Now here, I'm going to throw in my two cents about stuff that they can add or improve on the product maybe, that are just like little small things just to make it a little bit more, you know, unique. The one thing that separates this DD wheel from the rest of the market is the fact that it comes with a very nice bright colour. What I think they should do is they should capitalise off that so when you come to buy one of these DD bases, then you can have the option of just choosing whatever colour you want. Right now they've got two colours available, that's the orange and the black. However, how cool would it be for a direct drive to be like lime green or something like that, or, you know, sky blue, white, yellow, pink even? That would well and truly separate their DD base from the rest of the market because all of the DD bases at the moment look pretty much the same. Another couple of little things that I think this wheel would really benefit from is just more mounting options with the, uh, the dashboard. Now, I know I haven't talked about the dashboard in this video, so to say. However, there is a few little issues that I have with the, uh, the way the dashboard is mounted and plugged into. Um, there is only one option to mount the dashboard so far. I would like to see more options added, like having a USB cable added so you can probably have it to the side or something like that and uh, just being able to plug that into your PC separately. And also making sure that the dashboard is also compatible with SimHub because everybody uses SimHub with a dashboard. But like I say, the product is still being improved and developed with the software. And while it's not perfect, 
it's not going to be long before it is perfect. I can easily see them adding more ports to the back of the DD bay, so it'll be a bit like the Fanatec, so you can have the option to plug your pedals directly into the DD base. And even if they develop a gear shifter for a H pattern, then that will be really beneficial for have a port on the back of it as well. So, can I recommend this DD base to you guys, and steering wheel for that matter? 100% yes. I'm excited for the future of this company, and I think they're going to be big players very, very soon. Anyway guys, if you have enjoyed this review, feel free to leave a like, and if you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button with the notification bell. And while you're here, why not check out the lovely sponsors over there on the left hand side of the screen. This video was predominantly made possible by Moza, but it's also important to check out the other guys that also provide all of the gear for me. And if you are interested in buying the Moza DD wheel, then there is a link in the description so you guys can go and check out their gear. And if you guys feel like you want to help out that little bit extra, then I have a Patreon in the description below. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this review, and I shall see you in part two. Have a good night everybody.